Well, without further ado, we're going to welcome uh, Simon Lambert to the Sports Hour show, who is uh, originally from England. Uh, how you going, Simon? Maxie, how you doing, mate? Good to join you on the show. Yes, great to have you. And um, there's been a few tongue twisters uh, today, but um, hopefully I can uh, smooth it out. But uh, have you been, uh, you've been, you've been watching uh, the, the Australian uh, England series so far? Yeah, no, I've been trying to catch as much of it as possible. Obviously, uh, the time zones don't, don't make it too easy. Uh, I'm on at the middle of the night, but I've been um, yeah, keeping close eye on, um, on the scores and um, making sure I've caught all the highlights. So, yeah, the Aussies um, probably not putting up as good a fight as they probably should have done, really, with the team they had. Yeah, and can you tell us a little bit uh, about your journey? Uh, we, we can hear the uh, English accent, but do you want to um, expand on that a bit more? Uh, so, the journey is not simple. Um, so... Yeah, I came out to um, Australia five years ago um, to play as one of the overseas players at, at one of the local clubs out here. Um, and since then, I've been coming backwards and forwards from England to from England to Australia for the last five or six years. Um, I've been playing out in Melbourne for, for St Albans over the last five years, um, and then I've also been playing playing back home and played a little bit of um, county stuff in England and um, in the Premier Leagues there. So. Um, yeah, I've been to and fro over the last five years, but obviously, yeah, with the, the COVID-19 hitting, um, I've been stuck out in Australia and, yeah, I've enjoyed a winter that was probably better than an English summer. So, um, yeah, it's not, it's not been too bad, but, um, yeah, miss playing a bit of cricket and, um, yeah, looking forward to hopefully getting back into it, um, yeah, down in Adelaide, because I'm actually currently down in Adelaide, um, yeah, living with my girlfriend who lives down here and, um, yeah, I've managed to, managed to avoid the coronavirus so far, which is, um, yeah, pleasing. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's great. And um, yeah, you're in Adelaide now, as you said. How's that been, being away from home um, all this time and, and right now when you're, when you're restricted? Oh, look, it's pretty different. Um, I, it's, it's always sad not to go back home. So obviously that's where, I, that's where I've grown up. That's where my family is and that's where um, most of my friends are. So um, yeah, it's been, it's, but it's been, it's been great at the same time, obviously. Um, living, with my, living with my girlfriend, it's been, um, yeah, it's been great. So. Uh, I'm actually doing a teaching postgrad degree as well at the moment, so um, it's actually enabled me to do dedicate some time to that. Um, because yeah, had I uh, had I been back home and playing cricket and things, I probably wouldn't have got the time I needed to uh, get that going. So yeah, in, in a sense, it's been good to to do that, get some time, dedicate some time to it, and um, yeah, just just have a break from cricket, get in the gym a little bit, and I've yeah been playing a little bit of soccer as well. So. Um, yeah, good just to, to have a break and, and hopefully come back better than ever. All been well, so yeah. Yeah, and now to some cricket. What what are some of the differences, um, if there are if there are any differences compared to Australia and England uh, in playing in both countries? What are there any like uh, big differences that you've sort of seen experiencing both sides of uh, the playing field in in both countries? Yeah, I think oh, I think personally there's a there's a big difference. Um, I mean, the first difference is the ball used. Obviously, there's, there's been a lot of talk about the ball when England come out to Australia after bowl of a Kookaburra ball instead of the Duke's ball. Um, I think that's, a, that's quite a big difference because obviously the, the, the Duke's ball does tend to swing a lot. Um, and it does tend to, yeah, it tends to move around off the seam a lot more as well um, and compared to the Kookaburra, which doesn't shine quite as well. And the Kookaburra has got a big ridge in the middle of it, um, whereas the, the Duke's has got a really proud... Um, seam. Um, so the kookaburra doesn't tend to swing for as long or as much and the seam movement's nowhere near as exaggerated but I found that can have a different effect whereas when in England when it's moving say a couple of feet at times you just play a miss but in Australia as it's only moving say an inch you actually yeah. nick it better, you actually nick it a little bit more um, so while the movement's not as exaggerated the it can actually uh, lead to the downfall because the, the the lack of movement can cause you to get an edge instead of playing and missing. So that that's a big difference for me. Um, the Kookaburra ball, um, it doesn't spin anywhere near as much. The pitches in England are a lot drier. The the soil is or the yeah the soil is is different in England. It's a lot crumblier, um, whereas here it's a lot more clay like. So the pitches don't break up anywhere near as much. Um, and the pitches on the whole here are are better for batting they, they can get a bit dead and slow as you've as you've probably found it can become hard to score um but yeah on the whole they are flatter flatter pitches but it can make for slightly more boring cricket and um i think finally yeah. the, the the size of the grounds is 
the size of the grounds in Australia are, are on the whole a lot bigger than a lot bigger than England. So you don't get away with a plink uh, a plink over long off a six. You've got to really uh, you've got to really get it out of the screw. So yeah, that that those are probably yeah four of the main differences that I've found. Um, yeah. So, yeah. It sounds like um, Australia is just. Oh, I'm surprised, but, but from what you're saying, like, it, and then the difference between Duke's balls and um, and how they they bounce and swing more compared to kookaburras, where kookaburras don't do as much. It sounds like um, Australia is is much better for batting. Like, um, do 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 you think that? Do you think Australia is a lot better for for batting? Oh, I, I, yeah, hundred um, percent. In England, at times, the ball's swinging round corners and. And spinning square, and you're thinking, "Geez, where's my next run coming from?" Um, this is going to be a long day. Whereas, yeah, over here, there's there's not many times where that happens. You know, yeah, it moves around a little bit, it swings a little bit, but it's all little margins, which, like I said, can lead to your downfall at times because those are the small the small margins are the ones that get the edge. But yeah, I, I mean, you only have to look at how hard Australia find it when they go over to England to to see that. Those these those conditions are alien, alien to Australians and most players around the world because yeah, you look around the world, most pitches are dead. You, they use the kookaburra balls and they don't do anywhere near as much. Um, so from a batting perspective, Australia, maybe with the exception of the Wacker and places like that where it really does have pace and bounce, which again is a bit alien to the English guys because there isn't that sort of pace and bounce on offer. But um, yeah, on the whole, you'd rather be a batter in in Australia for sure. Um, and then when the white balls are in the use, it's, um, yeah, feeding time at the zoo. Yeah. And uh, have you been, you've been watching the, uh, the, the T20 series, series, I guess, between Australia and England uh, in the T20s and now they're going to play in the ODIs. Have, have, they, have you had any um, thoughts on, on that series and any strong opinions about how maybe Australia have tackled it and, and maybe how, how good England's sort of gone? <laughs> I mean, I'll be honest. I was pretty disappointed with how, how I was pretty disappointed with with how Australia went. Um, I thought they would have put up a better better fight than they did. And I thought the scores on the, the scores of the games would have been a lot higher. It was a pretty low scoring um, series as far as twenty twenties go. I think there was there was a, a couple of one sixties and a one forty. I think um, so. I was expecting a few more runs given the two lineups of both sides. I think the pitches, especially the last pitch, did offer a fair bit of turn, um, but. I, I couldn't believe Australia bottled. They bot, let's be honest, they bottled the first game. I mean, you're 100 for none or whatever. Your two openers have got 50 yeah. or thereabouts. You need 30 or 40 balls with eight or, eight or so wickets in hand and, and you crumble to defeat. I mean, I don't care who you are, but you, you've got to be winning from there, especially with the likes of Maxwell and um, those sort of guys to come. Stoinis, who are all, all big money players. Let's be honest, some of the best in the world. And, England bowlers are good, but with the white ball on a pitch like that, it shouldn't be shouldn't be an issue. Yeah, and just for the listeners, if you don't know, Australia lost the first they lost the first two matches of the three game series, um, and then they 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 won the third one, um, and they ended up losing the series two one. Um, but now they're going to play in a three game series um, in ODIs uh, against England. Uh, now I wanted to talk a little bit on the fan side of things. So in England, uh, the the fans seem to you know, you got the Barmy Army. It's a real strong atmosphere and um, the chance, like, compared to Australia, what, 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 how surprised were you when you first arrived in Australia and you sort of saw the fans? And, and what, what can you tell me about the differences? Oh, I think the, uh, the English public are a little bit, uh, a little bit rowdier than the, uh, than the Aussies. They're certainly, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what the right word to use would be, but they're certainly... You certainly get a gang of uh, a gang of followers that following England that are certainly very rowdy once they get on the beers, and they make it a pretty uh, pretty nasty place to be playing if you're on the opposing side. Um, I think the grounds have a bit of a different uh, have a bit of a part to play in the fact that the Australian grounds are very big, very yeah. very big grounds. Um, the stadiums are sat back a little bit. The ovals are massive. Whereas you look at England, where the grounds are a lot more a lot smaller, and the fans are on top of you and more times than not, it's a full house. So I think that has a huge part to play in the atmosphere um, because in England, they are selling out 20,000 seats every game pretty much. Whereas in Australia, there might be 30,000 fans in, but if you're at the MCG, it's only a third full. So you don't quite get, you don't get that same atmosphere and that same buzz because of how big the grounds are. And, and the fact that you are a long way from the action quite often because of how, how big the ovals are. So 
Um, I think that's what that 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 plays a big part in the atmosphere. Um, the fact that yeah, they're so sat back from from the um, from the action and the grounds are just the capacities are so big. Yeah, I think that's a yeah, spot on there with uh, the, the crowd size. And I think when you are at the MCG, you're so far away from the action. Like, yeah. And, I've, yeah. I've said for a long time that if you, in the Big Bash, they've, they've got the, um, they've obviously got the um, the Marvel Stadium that holds 55,000 and the Renegades are playing there and they're getting 15,000 in. And it feels empty. To me, you'd be better selling out the Junction Oval yeah. with five or 10,000 people than sitting in an empty stadium that's got no environment. That, that, that's something I've always said. And um, I think that would work better if they played in a smaller venue where it was sold out. A um, bit like down in Hobart, they only get ten or 12,000 people, but it's probably the best place in Australia to watch cricket because it's sold out and, and the cane train really get behind the hurricane. So, yeah, yeah no. Yeah, it was similar at, uh, in Perth. Um, the Wacker, like you're on the hill, you're close to the action. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, it's, it's a great point. Uh, now, going on to uh, the, the series coming up in the ODIs, um, what are you sort of predicting? And, um, yeah, what do you think ahead of, ahead of that, that, that three-match series? I mean, I'm looking forward to it. I think, it, yeah. I, think it, I, I like one-day cricket the most. I think 2020 cricket's a bit, bit hit and miss, slight, slight dash. Test matches, they, they're obviously a great test, but they, they're slow and they drag on. Um, but the one day career, I think it's perfect. I think it gives the batters enough time to really build an innings of quality and it, the bowlers have enough time to really put a match winning spell together. So um, I, th- I think it should be a great series. When you look at the teams on paper and the amount of depth both squads have got, um, I do think the um, we should be in for a thrill. And I hope they make some good pitches. I really do. I, I'd love to see 300 scored and, and chase down every game. Um, as much as, as the bowling enthusiasts out there all I'll hope there's a game where England are bowled for 150 or vice versa. Um, I'm all about the runs. That's what brings the crowds and that's what brings the people to the TV to watch. So, um, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm hoping for runs. I'm hoping for some good pitches. Um, so, uh, and I, think anyone, I, think any, I think anyone can win it. Um, whichever team shows up on the day, on paper, you've got, you've got the best players in the world in, in each spot. So, um, yeah, I don't think you can really... Yeah, pick between the two. Obviously, England are probably slight favourites, but if Australia fire up, then there's no reason why they can't can't win the series. Yeah, I think uh, if there's going to be runs scored like Ben Stokes um, in that Test fight last year, where he where he won won the game for England. Um, yeah, I think in general, high high runs scored, high run high run scoring games are uh, yeah are more entertaining. Um, so yeah, but um, thanks for coming on today, Simon. Um, Really appreciate it and uh, great to chat about some cricket. And um, yeah, maybe we get you on again to chat about some, some more cricket coming up this summer. Absolutely, Maxie. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me, mate. All the best.